Okay, teardown review time of a uh, Philips 60 watt equivalency LED light bulb. This is the latest and greatest. Snagged it off uh, Home Depot, and uh, it was around fifteen dollars. Uh, 830 lumens, uh, 25,000 hour uh, service life. However, the warranty period is only for three hours per day, seven days a week for five years. Uh, works works out to about 5,000 hours. Okay, so uh, to compare this bulb, let's uh, take a look at the older Philips bulb with the uh, funny yellow remote phosphors and silver body. Uh, certainly a funny looking bulb, but it did actually emulate the incandescent was actually turned on. Uh, and the Cree bulb, which probably started off the price wars in the 60 watt space equivalency. So uh, let's see how they all compare. Okay, light dispersal patterns. Uh, one of the classic problems of LED bulb design is you have to these really intense point sources and uh, convert them into a, a reasonable light pattern. Uh, polar graph here, obviously, uh, the bulb is replaced in the center here and then with a light meter right around at, um, at various angles here to get the light intensity. And uh, that results in a polar graph and then um, put those numbers into XL, of course, and uh, you can get a sense of how the, the light comes out of the bulb. Um, obviously, the further distance away from the center, the greater light pattern. Uh, of course, very little light coming out of uh, the base here. That's why they're basically zero. Um, and no surprise, uh, the two darker lines are the Phillips bulbs, uh, both the older Phillips and the newer Phillips. And you can see they're actually pretty close to each other, and that surprises me. That's really interesting. I have to take a close look how they've done the emitter array. And then the Cree comes in a little bit further here. It's mostly a, a side firing bulb. So, really interesting though. They've actually achieved a very consistent pattern, even though these two bulbs look like they're pretty different. Uh, so, I'd be really interested to tear them apart. Okay, in this test, uh, let's see how many watts the bulb draws. The packaging says 11 watts, and uh, on my kilowatt meter, it's uh, coming in at about 11 point, 11.1, 11.0. Okay, as advertised. Okay, flicker test. Uh, LEDs, of course, uh, can be powered with DC and they won't produce any flicker. However, for reasons of economy, often the filtering won't be complete on a light bulb and you'll get like 120 hertz flicker and actually people, um, some people are very sensitive to that. Um, very simple test to see uh, how a bulb performs with flicker and a oscilloscope probe obviously connected to a solar cell. And uh, when you probe up onto a scope here and put the cell next to it, you can normally see a pattern and um, one thing quite remarkable about this bulb here is actually the flicker is uh, very, very limited. So, um, this has been true actually of uh, several of the Phillips bulbs that I've torn down. They've actually had uh, very good flicker performance. Very, very minor. So, very impressive. Okay, well this is turning out to be an interesting bulb again. Uh, Phillips is definitely planning to win in the LED market. They've uh, got an incredible uh, breadth of product line. So, this one's looking pretty good. Uh, the flicker is quite, uh, quite limited. It's uh, got a reasonable number of lumens per watt, and the light pattern distribution uh, is surprisingly good. So, let's uh, tear it apart and see how it's built. Okay, first surprise. Uh, the outer shell is glass, just like the Cree. Uh, and it's got a protective uh, little coating on it, so when the glass shatters, it holds together. And uh, we look inside, of course, you can see the remote phosphor. So, this is really interesting. I'm sure this yellow color is turning off a lot of the consumers. Yeah, because people expect a white bulb to, well, you know, have a white covering, and, uh, of course, the uh, previous version didn't. So, below here, uh, we will find uh, an LED emitter array. Excellent. Okay, so let's just take a little closer look here at the glass dome. You can see there's a selective coating, uh, slightly more opaque on the top slightly more clear on the side. I'm sure it's helping with the light distribution because the way the array of LEDs are here with its uh, sort of what we call a forward firing design or downward firing where they're all basically pointing outwards, you have to create lights that go to the side. So I'm sure there's lots of work going on here uh, to create that nice even pattern. And more importantly, of course, a considerably simpler construction than uh, this, this bulb here. Uh, it's got a funny name. Some people call it the alien head. But when you open it up, you'll find that the emitter rays are actually, there's three of them and three circuit boards. Uh, I suspect as we further tear this down, this is going to be a less expensive structure, yet still achieving uh, quite a decent light distribution. Okay, so going further into the bulb, uh, you can see that there's a, a substrate here, uh, probably a conductive uh, aluminum backing. It's been epoxied to a, a stamped piece of metal, and of course you can see the array of uh, LEDs. 
And in the bottom here, the AC-DC converter, of course, with the uh, very traditional potting, which of course helps with thermal compounds. So we'll uh, just take this apart with a hacksaw probably and uh, study the circuit board. Okay, going further into the packaging, uh, there was a uh, plastic covering actually, which then covers up actually some metal. So two-piece, uh, surprising expenditure. Surprised they didn't uh, powder coat the metal and call that a day. Uh, once you peel back a little bit of the uh, epoxy here, uh, you can start seeing the potting compound. You can see this characteristic yellow, that's uh, uh, polyamide tape, uh, sometimes known as uh, Capnon, that's a trade name. Okay, give it going. Okay, uh, obviously the main uh, AC to DC converter, uh, really interesting board actually. Here's a topology I haven't seen before. Uh, let's go from the AC side, which is on the left here, to the uh, DC side, which is on the right. Uh, this little item here I'm pretty sure is a fuse. Uh, there is a choke here and a capacitor here. I'm pretty sure those would be the EMI filter. Uh, on the back end side here uh, you can see of course a bridge rectifier so you of course take the AC in and immediately bridge rectify it. Uh, what's really exciting though uh, is two transformers. Uh, one here and one here. Haven't seen a dual transformer design before and perhaps this is what's contributing to uh, uh, just excellent uh, flicker performance. Main controller I see is here, uh, Cirrus Logic, uh, CS1610. Uh, I pop up the data sheet here and you can see the uh, the topology actually. They have a little uh, application note and of course the app note pretty much uh, mimics what we see in the circuit board here. So, uh, very cool. Um, other than that, it's obviously been uh, wave soldered. So these surface mount parts would probably be glued on and then of course the through hole part stuffed with a, a pick and place machine. And perhaps some hand placing here too, because it's pretty uh, pretty dense assembly. Uh, and then of course run on a pallet through a wave solder. So a uh, reasonably cost-effective approach. So very cool. Uh, this is definitely the the best performing uh, power supply that uh, I've tried down to date. Okay, well there you go. Oh, this is another big pile of uh, components. Uh, tremendous uh, landfill, unfortunately. So hopefully these bulbs do have a really long life, because obviously it's just uh, lots of becomes of course very hard to recycle waste eventually. But um, that's not unique to Philips, by the way. That's just true of all these LED bulbs. Cool. Uh, LEDs uh, are very hard to get directionality with. Clearly, obviously, uh, Philips has some extremely deep expertise in optics and this uh, remote um, phosphor array and how they've uh, done the dome here has actually created a very, uh, very pleasing light pattern, uh, which is good. Uh, you can see a, I have a teardown on a, uh, another downward firing bulb, the Sun Sun, uh, and they, of course, don't have quite the sophistication on the optics side, and they can't get the, the beam spread, um, but... You can clearly see how the uh, they've done it here, and they've created an interesting bulb and a really interesting power supply. Uh, one that's uh, topology I haven't actually seen before. So again, a real cool uh, example of the uh, incredible innovation that's going on right now on these LED bulbs. Um, the market still hasn't settled down. It's absolutely um, every bulb we seem to tear down, taking a new and innovative approach to achieving you know, that cost effectiveness with still uh, really great light patterns. So very very cool.